Developing now, the medical examiner has ruled the death of a subway rider a homicide. The person was put into a chokehold by another rider. Whether the Marine who choked the subway rider to death will be charged is now up to the Manhattan DA. Either way, it is an ugly situation. Once again, shining a spotlight on the issue of mental illness. Eyewitness News reporter. All right, you guys, we are back with another breakdown out of New York. You guys are all familiar with the situation on the subway train involving a homeless man and another uh, civilian. Listen now, listen, people are saying that this is racist. You know how we get, right? And they're saying that this is justified, that this ex-Marine was coming to the rescue of the people on the train and that the homeless man, who was a black man, was actually there to cause harm. And he was exercising a level of self-defense and protecting other people. You guys, some people are saying this is not justified. Some people are saying this is murder. Well, he did die. What did he do? He choked him out for 15 minutes. He restrained him along with two other civilians that were on the train. You guys, what is my expert opinion on this based on what we know? Was this justified? No, it wasn't. It absolutely wasn't justified, you guys. But listen, this is difficult. This is a little bit more complex than a lot of people understand. So let me let me help you break it down. Let's go through the motions. Let me play the clip. I want to get your thoughts on it, but we are going to examine this thing properly based on what we know. And unfortunately, one of the uh, passengers recorded the incident kind of halfway through. So we don't see a lot of the interaction prior to the recording. Again, this is New York, right? So Having someone who's suffering from a mental health crisis on a train, on a subway train, this is not abnormal. So a lot of people are saying, hey, this guy, this ex-Marine, he murdered this homeless man and he's white and the homeless man is black. This is racist, you guys. I don't know about that, but let's take a look at this video and then we're going to break it down. It involves a fatal chokehold on a subway car. A witness says a man was acting erratically and threatening other riders when someone who was also in that car stepped in and restrained the man, putting the alleged attacker in a chokehold to restrain him even more. And eventually the man died after being taken to the hospital. So was this a case of someone protecting others, maybe even saving lives, or an out-of-control vigilante who caused a homicide? Valerie Castro has the latest, and we want to warn you, the video is disturbing. Tonight, a deadly chokehold on the subway in New York, Where are the cops? igniting a debate about when citizens should step into a volatile situation. A witness telling WNBC the 30 year old man on the floor was acting desperate and aggressive, making people feel threatened before the incident. That's when a 24 year old man stepped in and put him in this hold for minutes. <laughs> left unconscious, which is how police found him before taking him to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead, according to the NYPD. There is no known video from before the incident, but the North. So before we get any further, he was unconscious. My question would be, was he alive when the police arrived? That matters, right? That absolutely matters. They're saying he was unconscious. Um, well, was he breathing? Was he still alive? They're, they're doing CPR. He could have, they probably didn't have any vitals. We don't know. Uh, I would really like clarity on that. That's not going to come out until later. Um, was he alive when he was at the hospital and then he was later pronounced dead after, you know, maybe his vitals dropped, you know, after he was in hospital care? That does matter. So um, anyways, let's keep going. The bound F train in Manhattan was filled with strap hangers Monday afternoon, according to Alberto Vasquez, who recorded the video. He says he noticed the 30-year-old board the train. The man got on the subway car and began to say a somewhat aggressive speech, saying that he was hungry, he was thirsty, and that he didn't care about anything. He didn't care about going to jail. He didn't care if he gets a big life sentence, that it didn't even matter if he died. Vasquez says the writer's actions worried, even scared him, wondering if the man could be armed. He believes others around him were also in fear. New Yorkers grappling with whether the man who put him in the chokehold is a hero or a vigilante. I found it to be disheartening. Do you think if he had not passed away, someone might have hailed this person as a hero for intervening in a mm. situation like that? I do. Yep. I do. Yeah. Because, you know, the trains are a scary time right now. And um, sometimes you need to step up. But. Wow. Uh, what are they saying? Which I 100% agree. You know, if 
<laughs> if he survived, then this ex-Marine would have been hailed as a hero. They would have been like, oh man, thank you so much for doing something. Thank you so much for stepping up. You guys, this is, let me, let me just, let me just say this. This is New York City. Let's not get it confused. What do we know about New York? There have been plenty of cases in New York City where, what, you've had women being sexually assaulted. You've had people being robbed and things of that nature. You have people who have mental conditions that are harassing, attacking, assaulting citizens. This is not uncommon, not uncommon. So there have been arguments that people aren't stepping up, right? They say, hey, the citizens need to step up and help out other fellow citizens up until you mess up or when things don't go the way they want it to go. And then guess what? Now you were in handcuffs. Now you're being looked at as the bad guy when you really were trying, thinking that you were doing the right thing. Um, and I'm going to talk about that because to be quite honest with you guys, what makes this thing dangerous is a thin line with, with stepping up and conducting a citizen's arrest. You better know 100% that one, someone's life is in danger. Two, that there were no other options. And by you intervening, have saved someone's life to where it cannot be questioned no shot of a doubt that if you did not do something, you or someone else would have been extremely hurt or killed, right? If that does not happen, you guys, please do not intervene. Please do not intervene. Unfortunately, we live in a world where your life has to be on the brink before someone can step into where you have no worries about defending yourself. Um, and I think in this situation becomes questionable because what did the witness say? Hey, he was screaming, I want food, right? He was also screaming, saying that, uh, I don't want to go back to jail. He was screaming. You know, he was very loud. He was irate. Uh, people said they were in fear for their safety. OK, but what did he physically do to put someone in harm's way? What did he do? You guys, that matters. That matters. So especially when you're talking about someone dying behind you intervening. So that can't be uh, that can't be overlooked. Let's see what this guy says. If he put him in a chokehold for more than 15 minutes, that's not self-defense anymore. That's just murder. A group of protesters today calling for the man who intervened to be arrested. Make them know they're wrong! A former chief of department at the NYPD says people have the right to defend themselves and others. They have a right to do take action. As an individual on that train, to prevent someone from being assaulted. The witness Vasquez telling WNBC the hold went on for about 15 minutes, adding it didn't appear at the time that the intervention was life-threatening. We never thought he was in a situation where he was going to die, because at that moment, we surely would have intervened to try to get this person to let him go. Police say the 24-year-old was questioned and later released. The city's medical examiner determining the death was caused by the chokehold. Police haven't mm. identified either individual, but WNBC reached out to the 24-year-old. And, um, and, okay, so let's talk about that. I want... I did shout out to uh, I watched um, Tatum Tatum also talked about this officer Tatum those who know who he is um, we often we we're in a similar space and we talk about some of the things obviously both retired police officers and we definitely sometimes have a different perspective on these things and in this one uh, we do have a different perspective well why because I don't think this is justified uh, and I believe Tatum thinks it's justified but but here's 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 the problem this went on for 15 minutes and Tatum made a good point. He said, listen, when you're being choked out for real, for real, guess what? You, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long for you to gas for air, to cut off a person's windpipe, um, to tap out, right? To tap out. You're like, okay, okay. Hey, you got me. I'm going to black out. Tatum brought up a good point. When you're applying a chokehold, he had no intentions of obviously killing him. I, I believe there wasn't any intent to kill him because it took 15 minutes. And even in the video, and we don't have the full video, but you can see him still breathing, right? You see his stomach still breathing. What is the issue, you guys? A lot of people don't know there's two different types of chokeholds. There's a carotid chokehold where you are cutting off the blood supply to the brain. That causes you to black out, right? It's a very effective technique. I've used it plenty of times. And then guess what? Then you have the actual regular chokehold where you're actually cutting off the windpipe. Right. You're suffocating someone and you're using your forearm and you're bracing it against someone's throat. OK. And you just kind of lift up into it and you're choking them out. Now, with the carotid, you're actually the carotid chokehold. You're actually have their neck 
in between the crease where you bend your, your arm, right? Right in that crease is where their neck goes. And then you're applying pressure with your bicep and your forearm on the side of the neck, and it's actually cutting off blood flow, and you're forcing the head down, right, to where you can actually seat it really well. Um, it looks like to me, even in the video, you guys, when you're looking at the video, that he is not properly applying the chokehold. It's a mix, you, you see his chin, Faintly kind of right here. Um, it's not seated perfectly well inside the bend of his arm. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, that's a problem. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a photo to where we can get. And, you know, graphic warning you guys, um, this picture is not blurred out, but for the sake of so you could see it properly. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And I know this is difficult to watch and I apologize. Um, but let me, this is important. This is important. What you see here is his chin should be aligned flushed with his elbow he's not seated into the crease of his elbow properly now his right arm is is now it seems like it's not pushing his head downward seating it perfectly in it could possibly be actually forcing it closer to his throat right right up under his throat what's the other issue what if he wanted to tap out and say, hey, I can't, I'm not, I can't breathe. You got me loosen up a little bit. That is a natural universal response. You start hitting your leg, tapping something, tapping whatever you can. What do you see, you guys? He has two people here on the train. This one passenger here to the left with the hat on, the black hat on. He's holding both of his arms. So even if he wanted to tap, he's not speaking. And not only that, you guys, he is actually suffering from a mental health crisis at the time from someone who has actually had to arrest and detain and deal with multiple people who were suffering from a mental health crisis. You guys, listen, they can be either extremely strong, they could be extremely incoherent and their behaviors are not normal are not normal. So even if you're applying pain to gain compliance through pressure points, through joint locks and manipulations, they still do not respond naturally or as natural as someone who, who isn't suffering from a mental health crisis. So, so again, not expecting a civilian to know that who's not trained, but actually he's also a Marine. He was a former Marine. So he was trained to subdue people. So, you know, they're going to take this into account when they're examining this case and investigating. Some people are like, well, he killed this guy and they, they talked to him and they let him go. You guys, that in itself is not uncommon, right? You know, a lot of times there have been times we've invited people back to get interviewed twice before charges were met or charges weren't met. Uh, so that's not uncommon that someone's interviewed and then they're let go. It happens all the time. OK, so this isn't a race thing. Um, so what's the issue? The chokehold, in my opinion, based on the video that I watch, Looks like it was not applied properly. Okay, that matters. Why? Because that goes into the intent aspect of it. Did he intend to kill him? Um, I don't think so. 15 minutes? It doesn't take 15 minutes to choke somebody out who's not intending to actually choke them out. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't think that to be true. Now, what are, the, what are the issues here? Now let's talk about the law and how the law works, you guys. Self-defense. Was this self-defense absolutely not it's not because none of the witnesses so far said that he physically brought any type of harm on any of them he never did anything that was threatening anybody's life he made threatening statements out loud or he made statements that put people in fear that made people feel uncomfortable he never produced a weapon he never assaulted anyone you guys he was yelling and screaming and and probably what else he said i don't know but According to the witness, he made statements that he was hungry. He made statements that he's not going back to jail. Uh, he made uh, some other statements or whatever. But at the end of the day, did he physically 
bring any harm. You have to be able to articulate how this person put someone in fear from receiving great bodily harm or death. And under those requirements, you are allowed to use a level of force that is deadly. So self-defense, well, defending from what? That's the question, sir, what were you defending him from? Now, can you detain and restrain? Okay, yeah, he could have detained him, he could have tried to restrain him, but now you're dealing with someone who probably feels like they had no business being detained. Or now you have a right to resist that because maybe you feel like you didn't do anything wrong. Now listen, I understand the optics. There are people who are gonna say, listen, he was loud, he was belligerent, he was irate. You guys, I get it. But that doesn't mean you can go put your hands on people because you feel like they're getting on your nerves or because they're irritating. Again, did this person put someone in physical danger? Now, if he can't prove that, you guys, this is a problem. This is absolutely gonna be a problem. What did he do? He gave this man a soul bond and it wasn't justified. What does this look like? He accidentally killed him. He accidentally killed him. So some people say, okay, well, this is a homicide. Well, homicide just means a person died by the hands of somebody else. Will they charge him with murder? Is he guilty of something? In my personal opinion, based on what this says, you guys, this was not justified. I don't see any room to where self-defense was needed. Uh, sir, what were you defending? Oh, I think he was gonna, you think? Yeah, he was yelling and screaming, said he's not going back to jail. I, I think he had a weapon. Did you see a weapon? Did he, did he make any type of gestures? Did he pull something out? Did he look like, you guys, all that matters. Be mad if you want to, that matters. That matters. I'm not saying that the guy was wrong or he wasn't disturbing the peace. That's what we call the police for. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying he was wrong. I'm saying at what level does a citizen need to intervene to protect somebody else or themselves? You guys, when someone's life is in danger, if he cannot prove that, you guys, if he can't show that, if there are no witnesses or anyone else on that train who felt like he was there in imminent danger to receive great bodily harm or death, you guys, this is absolutely not justified. And now you have to go into whether or not this restraint was justified. You have to match force with force. When we talk about self-defense, you have to match force with force okay he had assistance he was choking him out and then there were two other passengers that were assisting in that video in that photo you saw one guy grabbing both of his arms okay so now this man even if he wanted to tap out and say i can't breathe he can't do it even if he wanted to fight back he couldn't do it so at that point in time okay you gotta you gotta lay up off of him a little bit if you're gonna hold him down for the police what did i see i saw improper chokehold now, what does that mean? Did he intend to kill him? I don't think so, but he died. You didn't intend to kill him, but he died. You guys, what is that? You guys, that's manslaughter. It's manslaughter. That's reckless. That's manslaughter. I, I wasn't trying to kill him, but he died in the process. Some people are gonna argue, well, this man was arrested 40 times. So what, you guys, it's not a death sentence because they've been arrested 40 times. You don't even know what they were arrested for. You don't know. And we're trying to make that an argument and nobody knew that, right? That wasn't knowledge in the moment. So you can't bring up stuff that we just miraculously found out because the news did some digging and say, oh, well, he was arrested 40 times already. Good riddance. You guys, listen, there are a lot of sick people out here who think that should justify a person being killed. It absolutely doesn't. Absolutely doesn't. Um, but let me let me finish this this, this news video. Let me see what, what else they're saying uh, about this. And he declined to comment. The incident striking a chord with New Yorkers who deal with tense situations on the subway often. I think the cops are getting a bad rap because they're not... Um, they're not the ones that should be helping out with mental patients, people that are mentally impaired. The late man's friend recalling his struggles. The thing that he was guilty of, of mental issues, and he had a guilty, guilt, he was guilty of being homeless. All right, Valerie Castro joins Top Story tonight. From so, you know, I'll leave it there. He was guilty of being homeless. He was guilty of having a mental illness. Uh, I don't disagree with that. 
Um, you guys, but this is why you vote. This is why you need to hold your politicians and local leaders accountable. What are you guys doing about this homelessness problem? What are you doing about the issues with the mental health? You guys, a lot of people don't even realize that it's not that easy to deal with. People who are suffering mental health uh, uh, problems, they have rights too. Police, we just can't go and scoot them off the street and drop them off at the hospital. It doesn't work like that. There's rules and there are policies and dealing with them. Why? Because they have rights too, you guys. And, and it's not that easy. A lot of people just want people to snap their fingers and to solve a lot of these social issues. Listen, me personally, me, I, I, myself as an officer, I am certified to deal with mental health um, individual citizens who are suffering from mental health crisis. I'm certified what we call CIT training, which is crisis intervention training. And so I received the certification that it helped a lot. It made a huge difference in being able to identify when people are going through a mental health crisis and then also how to mitigate the situations without having to use violence or physical force unless it was absolutely necessary. A lot of it is, you know, you're using de-escalation techniques, you're talking, um, you're giving them space and things of that nature. Um, and then sometimes you don't have a choice. If they're armed, there's, there's things you can do. If you can buy time, if you can use uh, non-lethal uh, weapons, bean bags, rubber bullets, pepper spray, and things of that nature, you guys, anything you can uh, because they need help and they're not operating under the right mental faculties. And so uh, it's not easy. It's absolutely not as easy as people think. These people also have rights and they have freedoms and you just can't go and violate them simply because you, you think that, that someone should do something about it. Uh, so it's not as easy as people want to make it seem. Um, and again, people, everybody's talking about how uh, someone failed them. They should have helped them. He was a great guy. He was performing on the on the streets homeless. Well, all you guys ran into him and knew he was down there. What did you do to help him? What did you do to help him? Everybody wants to say how they would have, could have, should have did something and after the person's dead. What you should have did all that while he was alive. You know, this is tragic. And the other thing too is this gives a bad um, uh, it's a bad rep for those who want to help out when they see things wrong or things going on. I remember that case that happened not too long ago where the guy was in the gas station and it was a, it was a black and a white, it was a black citizen and a white citizen. The black citizen was acting up in, in the, uh, in the gas station, talking down to the, uh, the clerk, you know, saying a whole bunch of obscenities. And then you had the white firefighter, remember that? And he got into a tussle with them and the guy, the black guy drew the gun um, and the girlfriend picked it up and the girl and the, the firefighter was choking the black guy out. Remember that? I don't know if you guys remember that. And the girlfriend shot the firefighter in the back of the head and killed him. And guess what you guys said? It was self-defense. You know, if you're going to get involved, you need to understand what you're doing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying you need to be properly educated and understand. Um, they're going to look at this, uh, this ex-Marine. They're going to look at him and say, listen, you were trained. You were trained. They'll pull up his records in the military and say, you were trained. So how did this happen? He's not a regular civilian, you guys. He's a trained Marine. And they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna crack down on it. And they're going to like open it up and say, hold on, there's other things you probably could have done. Um, this is going to discourage people. And this is why people don't get involved. So now when people start making that argument, well, how come you didn't do something? How come you do? Well, because if I do something, then you got to be looking at me like I'm the bad guy. So that's why people, especially in New York, they turn their heads. They don't pay attention. They don't get involved. People get assaulted, robbed, killed, raped all the time on the on the uh, on the subway. So anyways, uh, what are your thoughts, you guys? I know a lot of people are saying a lot about this. Is this justified? Absolutely not. And if anybody wants to debate me on it, you know where to find me. All right, you guys, with that being said, put your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Um, if you agree or disagree, I'm curious to see what you got to say. All right, with that, good night. God bless.